Thyroid aging is impacted by and impacts many hallmarks of aging, including cell senescence and telomere shortening, inflammation, epigenetics, metabolism, loss of proteostasis, and stem cell renewal. More specifically, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, induces the thyroid gland to produce inactive thyroid hormone, or T4, and it's named T4 because it carries or it has four attached iodine atoms. One of those iodine atoms is removed to produce the active form of thyroid hormone or otherwise known as T3. Now T4 can be also converted into reverse T3, which diverts away from the production of active thyroid hormone or T3. And T3 can also be degraded into T2, further reducing the active thyroid hormone concentration. Now collectively, thyroid hormone metabolism can impact longevity, but also aging and age-related disease. So with that in mind, in today's video, for the thyroid hormones, free T4 and free T3, what's optimal? And to address that, we'll take a look at how these thyroid hormones change during aging and what's their association with all-cause mortality risk. So first, starting with the data for free T4, as we'll see in this plot, it, it decreases, then it increases during aging. On the y-axis, we've got free thyroxine, otherwise known as T4, and this is in picomolar, and that'll become, uh, we'll see why that's important in a minute. On the x-axis, we've got age, and note that the age range is from 20 to 90 years, and later in the video, we'll go deeper into age-related changes in centenarians. And this study includes 83,000 plus people. If anyone's come across larger studies for how these thyroid hormones change during aging, please post it in the comments, and I'd be happy to give you a shout out in a future video. Also note that all of the papers in the video will be in the video's description with links in the video's description. All right, so free T4 in youth, average levels for women in red and men in blue are around 13.25 and 13.5 picomolar, which then decline during aging until around the 50 to 60 year range with values around 12.5 picomolar. Afterwards, we then see an age-related increase up until 90 years for both women, in, again in red, and men in blue. Now note that the reference range for free T4 is, and this is Quest Diagnostics, Diagnostics reference range, is 0.8 to 1.8 nanograms per deciliter. So I'm gonna compare the reference range with the data that we see in the plot. Now first, note that the units are different. Nanograms per deciliter is not the same as picomolar, so we'll have to do a conversion. So when taking the lowest value, 12.5 picomolar, which is found in fi around 50 to 60 years, and then the values that are expected to be, average values that are be, uh, expected to be found in youth, 13.25 and 13.5 picomolar for women and men, respectively, converting that into nanograms per deciliter, we get a range of 0.97 to 1.05 nanograms per deciliter. Now, when comparing that with the reference range, we would miss the age-related increase after 50 to 60 years. And we would also miss the age-related decrease prior to, uh, you know, going from 20 years to about 50 years. So this once again highlights that the reference range is not necessarily optimal. We may never see changes that are outside of the range, both on too high or too low. And by focusing on year-to-year -year changes, that can better capture uh, how we can slow, potentially slow aging. At least that's my hypothesis. All right, what about free T3? As we'll see here, it decreases during aging with data that's more continuous relative to the data for free T4. Free T4. On the y-axis, we've got free triiodothyronine or free T3, again in picomolar, plotted against age. In youth, average values for women in red are about 4.6 picomolar and for men, about 4.9. And then we can see that for both women and men, values in 90-year-olds are close to about 4.1 picomolar. So the data is pretty continuous in terms of a decline for men, whereas for women, it's biphasic. In other words, it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down again. All right, so here for free T3, the reference range is 2.3 to 4.2 picograms per milliliter. And we'll have to do some converting based on the data on this graph. And when we do that, we get a range of 2.67 to 3.19 picograms per milliliter. So once again, all of these values are within the reference range. And if we only focused on the reference range, we would miss the age-related free, free T3 decline. Now, that free T3 is lower and that free T4 is higher at older ages after around 50 to 60, that suggests a decreased conversion of free T4 into the active thyroid hormone, free T3, 
during aging. So looking at the free T3 to free T4 ratio may be more informative. And that's what we can see here, which is on the y-axis. Once again, plotted against age. And this is also, again, in the 20 to 90 year age range. So in youth or relative youth, younger than around 50 years old or 50, 50 to 55 years old, we can see that the free T3 to free T4 ratio is about average values are about 0.35 to 0.38. Uh, and that's for both women and men. After which there is a significantly significant decline for, the, for this ratio during aging as shown by the red arrows, such that at older ages, we can expect to see lower values for the free T3 to free T4 ratio of around 0.31 to 0.32. All right, but what about older than 90 years? And as we'll see here, there is a further reduced free T3 to free T4 ratio in centenarians going from 0.3 to 0.2. So on the y-axis, we've got the free T3 to free T4 ratio plotted against age. But in this case, the age range goes from 50 years to about 113 years old. And then we can see that there is a significant inverse correlation. In other words, a relatively lower free T3 to free T4 ratio at the oldest ages and the oldest old relative to younger ages. But maybe a lower free T3 to free T4 ratio is a marker of longevity. In other words, a good thing. So if centenarians have a relatively low ratio, maybe that's something we should strive for. But I'd argue maybe not. And that's based on this data. So free T3 to free T4 ratio on the y-axis plotted against FI, and the FI is a frailty index. This study included 180 centenarians that had an average age of 102 years. And to the right, more frail, and to the left of the plot would be on the x-axis, less frail. And then we can see that there's a significant inverse correlation. In other words, a lower free T3 to free T4 ratio is associated with being more frail. And conversely, a higher ratio is associated with being less frail. So that argues that having a lower ratio may, may not be good for frailty. And I'd argue probably not good for uh, health and longevity. Even though you can get to advanced ages with a low ratio based on the frailty index data, that would, it would suggest that having higher levels may be even better for being healthier and more fit at advanced age. But that's only part of the story. What, what's the association for this ratio with all-cause mortality risk? And we'll see that a relatively higher ratio is associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk, and conversely, a ratio less than 0.45 is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, as we'll see here. So on the y-axis, we've got the hazard ratio of mortality, or risk of death for all causes, plotted against the free T3 to free T4 ratio. In terms of uh, how big this uh, sample uh, study sample size was it was about 6200 people average age of, a, of about 46 years and with a median follow-up so in other words starting at the initial assessment of thyroid hormone levels who was alive and who was dead a median of about 12 years later in terms of what's significant we put up a red line at a hazard ratio of one and then remember where the shaded gray region is completely above it or completely below it we have a significant association so when compared with the referent, which was defined as 0.5, we can see that values that were higher than that were not associated with a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk as that shaded gray region completely overlaps with one. In contrast, when this ratio, the free T3 to free T4 ratio was less than about 0.45, we can see that the shaded gray region is completely above that hazard ratio of one. In other words, significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. All right, so one study is nice. These data were also shown in another study, as we'll see here. Once again, hazard ratio and the 95% confidence interval, that's the shaded red region in this plot for all-cause mortality or risk of death for all causes on the y-axis, plotted against levels of free T3 divided by free T4. And this study had a larger sample size, and I usually start with the larger studies first, but the x-axis is a bit screwy. They didn't convert uh, their thyroid hormone levels into the proper units. So you can see that we've got two, four, and six, where the free T3 to free T4 ratio should be less than one. So they didn't properly convert their units. Nonetheless, we can see in both plots that the data is similar. So in terms of significance, we put up that red line at a hazard ratio of one, and we can see that relatively higher levels for this ratio are associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk, whereas relatively lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So two different studies, two different cohorts, similar data. 
But note that the average age in both of these studies was pretty similar, and the median follow-up was also in the same ballpark. In other words, uh, the average age of death was, or median age of death was somewhere around 60 years. So what about at older ages? What's the association for this ratio with all-cause mortality risk at older ages? And let's go to as old as we can get, centenarians, an average age of 103 years, as shown here. Survival on the y-axis, who was alive and who had died, plotted against time, now in days. And in terms of what's significant, we put up that uh, line at 0.5 survival. This is the time when half of the population has died and half is still alive. In terms of the shortest lifespan, that was cluster 3 in red, and they had an average free T3 to free T4 ratio of 0.18. And they lived an average of 500 days after the initial assessment of thyroid hormone levels. In contrast, cluster 1, as shown in blue, had a higher ratio of 0.24, and they had a significant increase for median lifespan, living about 400 days or 15 months longer than cluster 3, which had a lower free T3 to free T4 ratio. So from these three studies, we can see that having a relatively lower ratio is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk at both young, younger ages, relatively younger ages, and advanced age in the oldest old. All right, so that brings us to what's my data as m one of the major goals of this channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible and thyroid hormone func function is obviously one of the organ systems. Now, I've been taking levothyroxine. If you're familiar with the channel, you, then you know I've been taking levothyroxine prescribed for almost half of my life. And with that in mind, I've basically forgotten about tracking thyroid hormones with the assumption that I should be fine. I'm taking 137 and a half micrograms per day of levothyroxine. Well, that may not be true. So I only have two tests, and I'm going to change that. Uh, you know, as I'm going to include thyroid hormone testing at every test going forward. So I'll, I'll at least have seven more tests every year going forward indefinitely. So I only have two data points. One of them, October in 2022, and based on the T4 and T3 free levels for both, my free T3 to free, free T4 ratio was 0.3. Not too bad, as we'll see in a second. For my most recent test, though, for the April 29th of 2024, so last month's test, for the same data, free T4 and free T3, and calculating the ratio, I get a much lower value of 0.18. Now, remember, it declines during aging, so this is going in the wrong direction. And 0.18 is what you'd exp expect to find in uh, in you know, a, a short-lived centenarian. Now, that doesn't mean that I've got data that will get me to centenarian status. My interpretation of it is it's too low and I want to avoid the age-related change. And knowing that in at least two data points, I've had values as high as 0.3, I at least want it to be as high as that. If not as high as the data that's found in youth, 0.35 to 0.38. So that's the plan. So how will I increase it though? That's the big question. I only have to, uh, two data points and I can't calculate correlations yet. So the initial plan is to increase selenium intake from whole food, which would I, which I'd expect to be lowest risk relative to taking high dose supplements. And the major source of my selenium intake comes from Brazil nuts. Now my current selenium intake, mostly from Brazil nuts, is already around 275 micrograms per day. But the tolerable, to, sorry, tolerable upper limit has been defined as 400 micrograms per day. So the initial plan is to increase Brazil nut intake up to the tolerable upper limit of 400 micrograms per day. And then I'm going to retest very soon, not just for thyroid hormones, but everything else. Hopefully I don't increase or improve uh, thyroid hormones in terms of the, the free T3 to free T4 ratio, but then mess up other stuff. And then I'll have to ha come up with a new strategy for improving the free T3 to free T4 ratio. So stay tuned for that data in an upcoming video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I offer blood test consults. And we've got, got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, including metabolomics, and CyFox Health, which includes Grimage and ApoB for the CyFox Health, green tea, uh, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tracking brand, as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.